In the previous part, we discussed about the process of fertilization and double fertilization. And now after fertilization, whatever happens is uh, grouped or kept under uh, what we call post fertilization changes. So we will start with post fertilization changes. And here there are many things which are going to take place. But before we take up all those changes, let us quickly go over what has happened so far and the structures which are formed as a result of fertilization and double fertilization, what are they going to give rise to? So that when we take all those steps one by one, we'll understand which structure is giving rise to what. So here, this is the ovary part. And in this ovary part, we made only one ovule. So let us make this one ovule in which this fertilization has taken place. And we made a bitegmic ovule. In this bitegmic ovule, there is this embryo sac. In this embryo sac, as we, we are saying that fertilization has taken place, that means the structure which is seen here in the middle is actually the zygote. So zygote is formed here. So this structure is zygote. It is formed by the fusion of one male gamete with the egg. There were two synergets, one degenerated at the time of entry of pollen tube, the other one also starts to degenerate. That means once the function of synergid is over, it is going to get degenerated. And at the chalazal end, there were these three antipodals. These three antipodals would also degenerate. So this is degenerating antipodals. And here, these are de degenerating synergids. So they are going to degenerate once their function is over. In this middle part, there is a triploid nucleus and a triploid cell form. So when it was the nucleus, we called it primary endosperm nucleus. And this primary endosperm nucleus changes into primary endosperm cell, which is actually a 3N or a triploid cell. So this is formed as a result of triple fusion and the zygote is formed as a result of fertilization. Around this embryo sac, when the embryo sac was unfertilized or the egg was unfertilized, here there were cells and these cells, they are of the new cellular tissue. So now what is going to happen to all these structures? The ovary, this part, the ovary part will change into fruit. So ovary is going to change into fruit. Ripened fertilized ovary is the common fruit that we are talking of. This is the ovule. Ovule is going to change into the seed. These two integuments they are going to change into the seed coat. So when we see a complete seed form inside a fruit that entire ovary has changed into fruit, the ovule has changed into the seed. If there is only one ovule, we'll find only one seed in the fruit. But if there are many ovules, we would find many seeds in that uh, fruit. Now, zygote is going to give rise to the embryo. So this is one important post-fertilization change or event which we have to study in detail. The other change is going to be formation of the nutritive tissue that is endosperm. So this is going to give rise to endosperm. Endosperm is the nutritive tissue. So these two changes are taking place and simultaneously the other things are also going to 
change. Ovary into fruit, ovule into seed, this zygote will give rise to the embryo and this cell will form the nutritive tissue. When all these changes are taking place, by that time, complete new cellus gets used up normally. So, we write here that normally complete new cellus gets used up. But sometimes even after formation of a complete seed, some new cellar tissue still remain. So, persistent new cellus or persistent new cellar new cellus containing seeds are called perispermic seeds so if there is some new cellus still remaining after the embryo formation and complete seed formation then those seeds are called perispermic seed and here the example is the seeds of beetroot and black pepper. So these seeds are perispermic seeds. Now let us come to one important change post fertilization change that is formation of endosperm. So here we will take up endosperm formation. Endosperm is the nutritive tissue. Nutritive tissue means it is going to supply the nourishment to the developing embryo and that's why it has the nutritive material or reserve food. It acts as reserve food. It supplies all that required nutrient to the developing embryo. On the basis of its formation, this endosperm can be divided into three types. One is known as free nuclear endosperm. Free nuclear endosperm. Now what happens here is this primary endosperm cell, which is a 3M cell, it undergoes only nuclear division or karyokinesis. Here is the nucleus, the triploid nucleus and suppose only the nucleus is dividing, not the cytoplasm. Then after some time, this is going to get bigger and here there are going to be many triploid nuclei. So only nuclear division, no cytokinesis. Only nuclear division, no cytokinesis. Then the type of endosperm which is formed is termed as free nuclear endosperm and this is seen in coconut. The coconut water which we get in tender coconut is actually the endosperm and it is free nuclear type. So coconut water is the example of free nuclear endosperm. The second type of endosperm is known as cellular endosperm. Cellular endosperm. In cellular endosperm, the division is proper or normal. After every karyokinesis, there is cytokinesis. So if this is the primary endosperm cell, then when it divides, it's going to be two cells with nuclei, then four cells with nuclei and ultimately there would be a cellular mass which will be formed, triploid. All cells are going to be triploid because the division is mitotic division. And the example that we're going to write here is again of coconut, but it is the white edible part of coconut. That is also endosperm and the water is also endosperm. So here the white part, white part of coconut is actually cellular. So how is the endosperm formed in coconut? What happens is it starts with one triploid cell.
first few divisions are free nuclear divisions which result in the formation of that water and then on the peripheral part the next divisions are going to be with cytokinesis. So one nucleus it divides into two and there would be cell walls which are laid around those nuclei. So the inner part remains watery and the outer part becomes solid. So inner that is water is formed due to free division of nuclei only and that is known as free nuclear endosperm. And the peripheral solid edible part is by cellular. Third type of endosperm is known as helobial type. Helobial is normally seen in case of monocots and it is an intermediate type of endosperm. Few divisions are free nuclear and then cyto, uh, with cyto, uh, cytokinesis or let us say it like this. This is the primary endosperm cell. The first two, three divisions are going to be with normal, say this is a this is first division, two cells are formed. One more division, four cells are formed. And after that, some cells, they undergo only free nuclear divisions. So, after this, it is going to look like this. Here, there are few cells which are formed. And this cell, say this one, the cell which is at the end, it is dividing only by free nuclear division. So initial cell mass is formed and then it is all free nuclear division. And that is why we call it the intermediate type between the free nuclear and the cellular endosperm. Endosperm as we said it is a nutritive tissue. It is going to supply nourishment for this zygote which is going to develop into the embryo. In most of the cases this endosperm will get used up completely when or by the time this embryo is formed. So when the seed is formed, embryo is completely formed, there is no remaining endosperm. Such seeds are termed as non-endospermic seeds. But if the endosperm persists in the seed after embryo formation, then they are known as endospermic seeds. So on the basis of presence or absence of endosperm in the seed. The seeds can be endospermic or non-endospermic. Once we complete the process of embryo development, then we will also talk about these types of uh, seeds that is endospermic and non-endospermic and we'll further classify it into dicot endospermic, monocot endospermic, dicot non-endospermic and monocot non-endospermic. So we'll take up those examples in detail. Here we have understood one process under post-fertilization changes or events that is endosperm formation and it is the nutritive tissue which is going to supply all that nourishment required for this development of the embryo. Now in the next part, we will take up the next event that is formation or development of the embryo.